everyone, I'm Felicia Fitzpatrick, and I am so excited because today I will be chatting with the music team of Anne of Green Gables EP, including songwriters Matt Vinson. Hey, hey Matt. Felicia. Hi. And Maddie O'Brien. Hi, Felicia. Hey. Hi. Hey. And the orchestrator and producer of the concept album, Justin Goldner. Hey, hey. Ah, what's up? Hey, guys. Um, and we'll be chatting about the musical's concept album. So it's not a cast album. It's it's like an EP of songs from the show. Everyone, make sure to stay tuned after our discussion for the premiere of a music video of the musical's A Different Kind of Girl reprise song, uh, which will be featuring Juliet Redden, who will be starring as Anne Shirley in the Goodspeed production in fall of 2021. So y'all, let's dive in. Really excited to talk with you guys today. Got to listen to the music on the low and I'm obsessed. Uh, so I can't wait to hear about your process with all of it. But I'd love to start out with what was your history and what was your familiarity um, with Anne of Green Gables as like the source material, the novel before this project? Uh, my mother and I have two sisters that were obsessed with the books. And I remember um, growing up have it, reading them and uh, and just sort of her being a character um, uh, in our childhood lives that mm -hmm. um, that I related to and and when Matt and I started looking for a project we wanted to adapt something and I always thought with this character's imagination and sort of her scope um, that she might she could translate to the musical stage if done well mm -hmm. and I thought we could probably do it so I brought it to him. So I, I want to hear more about the the fighting the musical moments within the novel. So Maddie actually I think is a an excellent performer in his own right. And so our writing process is a little bit like getting to act out the, or I get to be part of the room when, you know, Maddie can we try on Anne for size and start to, you know, to embody the character a bit. And so uh, there's really in the, in the, in the room, we, you know, we'll, we'll work through a scene. Maddie will have most of the time the lyric first, or at least ideas of the lyric, of the lyric and we sit down and sort of let it let it come in. And it, it's kind of a fun sort of acting it out session and that, that evolves from there. Yeah. Yeah, and we, and I really wanted to make sure that we started with the, like grounded in as much of Ella Montgomery, the original author's work in words. So we started really, I, the first reading we did was like four and a half hours and it, I used only her text really, other than for musical moments. And then as we figured out like what we, the obviously the novels are so gigantic, we had to kind of figure out what story we wanted to tell through them and while still remaining loyal to what she what she created. And so then we started to sort of move stuff away and move stuff away and focus and focus more on the through line of how to get it to the stage. And, uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, that was, that was really the, the process. What were the moments that you, did they, how did they just speak to you? Like when you read a passage, how were you like, you know what, this is what we need to turn into a song. For me, Matt and I talked a lot about what themes we wanted to bring out and the things that mm. I think always attracted me to the stories were, it has, a, the the books have a really beautiful way of speaking of different types of love. There's like fl familial love, platonic mm. love, you know, obviously romantic love. And they're super subtle and complex the way that they deal with all these layers. I think one of the most beautiful relationships in the entire novel is Matthew and Marilla, who are brother and sister, both single and un, you know unmarried and live together mm -hmm. and become the foster parents for Anne. And it, it's just these sort of really complex, uh, subtle ways that they deal with these, that Ellen Montgomery deals with these topics. And that's where we started to really hone in on and how those relationships between the friends and the love interests and the family all work together. And that's sort of what uh, defined the musical in the end, I think. I love it. I love it. Yeah, no, that was, I, that's so fascinating. Because <laughs> I was curious too of like how you did balance your own writing sensibilities, if you will, and your own voice with L. M. Montgomery's, right? Like how did you create that balance? First of all, I think the character of Anne, what in, what's inspiring about her to me is she's, you know, both, this fiercely independent, un unafraid uh, presence. Um, at the same time, she has this yearn to her, and this you know you you feel the things that she she longs for, and sort of that that blend for me at like certain moments and certain you know kinds of things that she says lend itself to a certain type of music, and so some of the some of some of the you know you can hear the yearn in some of the the mm. the melodies, and also at the same time you can hear the you know, the effervescent joy. So for me, it's a lot about her 
spirit and how it translates into a particular moment. Anne's like this crazy contemporary character. So when I first approached Bat on it, I, I said, you know, we don't really write, we've written together before and we don't write in the world of, um, you know, uh, uh, Oklahoma or things like that, though we love those those shows, I, I we definitely lean a little bit more into the more contemporary pop, folk, rock w world blended with a real sen a, a understanding of musical theater songwriting. And when I went to him, I, I said, you know, she's such a contemporary character and the story is so, it has this like like subtle contemporary edge that she's sort of standing on the, the start of a new world um, uh, and so I think I said to him, you know, I think we could do this and it would be an entire, our music would actually help define a, a new angle on, on the material. And I think, I think that's, it has done that nicely, I think. We'll see what right. everybody else thinks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but how, so how would you describe kind of the, the musical identity, like of the show genre wise, vibe wise? Yeah, this, and this is a tough question you know, but it's, I think for us, we um, often have like sort of a collage aesthetic, um, musically, definitely. And so, I mean, I really do think it's, if you took one, any one song, there for me, it breaks down even to a measure by measure, you know, there there could be a, a passage where the, the melody or the vocal arrangement reminds me of an Indigo Girl song and like a folk rock vibe, mm. but then, then layering on top of that, you know, more of an alt you know, alternative rock kind of vibe that gives right. it a bit of a drive. Um, but then like one little specific moment might be like, oh, this is kind of a fun Beach Boys riff, you know, just <laughs> there's a randomness to it that um, I just like, hey, it gives me joy or it tugs at my heartstrings and yeah. and when we, we play together, that's sort of what we're looking for. But like we all contain multitudes. So it's like fun to have those different elements, right? You know? Totally, yes. Yeah. And, and so orchestration wise, Justin, like I was saying, like the fact that you came to it fresh, you know, what was it like approaching the, the material that way and, and thinking of the orchestrations for that? So looking at it musically, Matt and Maddie would come to me with a list of influences for each individual song. Um, and as they already alluded to, those influences really, really ran the gamut, they're very, very wide. And so diving into those influences and, and sort of the deep knowledge of all of these different uh, musical angles um, was, was really interesting and finding the ways in which those threads, those musical threads uh, play into what these characters speak and their thoughts and feelings and all those sorts of things. So talk to me about the collaborative process. Like, are you guys sitting at a piano together? Like I know you were saying sometimes that like it would be a lyric and you would play off of that for the music, but I mean, tell us the experience. I mean, it's been tough over the past, you know, period, period where we couldn't have been in the room together, but most of the time we write in, in the room together I really, um, you know, prefer to be at the piano, and and you know, I think we're often in the moment creating the melody, and then you know, you know, once we have an idea, Maddie will sing it, and then that takes us to another place. It's really a very organic and um, sort of in the moment kind of thing that we enjoy together. I, I tend to work from the book, uh, you know, my not Ella Montgomery uh, like first, but then I start to work for, on the script, and then I work out of okay, what's the lyric, and I actually almost before every lyric I write, I go on like long walks and just try and find like what the hook is. And then I'll start to write, like sort out a lyric on the page in, in some way, shape or form. And then I'll, Matt and I'll get together and we'll pound it out in some fashion. And sometimes it's super easy and sometimes it's not. Right. <laughs> and, um, but we have, we definitely have gotten to a place, you know, Matt and I have worked together for a really long time. And when we started working together, I think there there was, I think we've developed a dynamic in just how to collaborate with each other. Like I know what Matt will, I can bring a song and knowing he's gonna love this lyric and he's gonna, he's gonna know exactly what to do with it. And I don't have to have any sort of influence whatsoever. I can just walk away and vice versa, you know, and I think, I think we know each other well enough now to preemptively be able to think, okay, I, I think, I think Matt's gonna love this or he's not, or, you know, and which is very helpful. It's like a love language, like collaborations, like you have to know each other's like communication uh, style, yeah. right? It's wow. a, it's a <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> so I, I do want to hear though, with that in mind, like what what was the most challenging song to write for y'all with the show? And then what was what was the easiest? So I think that, I mean, for what we're working on for the EP, I think the, the most challenging song was, I think the song you're gonna get to hear a little bit of later on. Um, a different kind of girl, mainly because where of where it came in the process. We already had constructed a lot of the score already, mm -hmm. so it it actually needed to, to deliver a certain 
thing in the moment in the show. Um, we wanted to make sure it was really accessible. It needed to, in some ways, sum up um, Anne's spirit. And so I just remember the process for that one. I may think that we tried it in the room, came up with some ideas. I remember I sent over some, you know, here's some melodic ideas that have nothing to do. And I think, Maddie, you were on an airplane one day, I think, and you had that sort of light bulb moment. Yeah, I was flying back from London. Do I had been working on a play in London, and I was flying back, and I had written all these like just terrible lyrics. I mean, they were they were like embarrassingly bad. And Matt had sent over music, and I was trying to link it up with the music. And then I just sat there on the plane. I was like, "What? It, what are we talking about here?" And it, the song also has it's a reprise. It, she sings it as a duet in the first act. Anne and Diana sing it, and then in the second act, um, she sings it. And it had to have a totally different meaning in 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 the second act. She had to own it in a different way. And so I was like searching for this lyric, and then it, I just said, "You know, she's she's different. She's really different." And that sort of led to the lyric of "Different Kind of Girl." And and I wrote it while I was in the air coming to, back from London. Most of it, and then and then Matt and I met and said it in a an afternoon actually when we finally got it it was more my glamorous. no it's so glamorous it's like i was heading back from london that was not a british yeah, accent yeah. but yeah like that's so so i want to hear more about that too like for all of you uh, you said long walks maddie but like where a plane wow so where do you usually find the inspiration strikes you um when you're writing or orchestrating Oh, that's such a big question. Like, I feel no. like creative people are always thinking about mm. about those sorts of things. Mm. I um, I think that there's sort of like, for me anyway, there's there's two angles to it. One is cultivating habits of of mm. creativity and and like cultivating spaces to um, search the you know or probe the depths of your creativity, which John Cleese talks about a lot. And the other is um, knowing like when inspiration strikes having the the sort of thought to be able to like oh i have an idea i'm gonna i'm gonna either gonna work on it right now or i'm gonna put it in a place where i can work on it when i'm in a better spot and for maddie it seems like you can work on it wherever it comes <laughs> no i know just drink order that's, that's, in, so i wish that were the, the case i wish that were the case <laughs> but i like the idea of of you know habits of creativity it's kind of like exercising in a way right like that's so fascinating um, so, okay, you ha the musical is here, you've written it, coronavirus happened, <laughs> masks are being worn, yeah, we're binging Netflix. What, why, why make this EP now? What was the, the catalyst for making the EP right now? It's really easy to get sucked into the negative of it all and, okay, this isn't happening and that isn't happening and, you know, and, you know, there's, there was, in the industry at large, it, it's so heartbreaking, you know, for, artists mm. as a whole, like our whole community has just been devastated by this. And luckily we had the opportunity with Goodspeed let us know early on that not, not to worry, the production would happen the following you know season, which was a, an unbelievable relief for us. And then, uh, and then, you know, Justin and Eric and our producers and um, Justin Goldner uh, were, they really tried to shift us to the positive and what, okay, we can't do this. This is not going to happen. What can we do in this time period? And, um, and I actually thought it was absolutely insane because recording an album, we're like, how are we going to record an album with coronavirus? But uh, Justin Goldner said, oh yeah, it's totally doable. And this is how you do it. And he laid out this crazy plan and we, and we, and here we are. So it's been, it's been great. And it's been something great to focus on that's positive as opposed to some of the, the darker things that are going on right now. Right, bringing a sense of joy, finding those moments. Yeah, totally. um, so Justin, just for like us who don't know that it's so easy to record an EP, like talk us through <laughs> the process of putting it together and, and why it could be so easy. Well, there it has its own challenges, but I think that, uh, you know, sometimes um, working within a, a, a restrictive framework can like, I don't know, it, it can be, can bring out other sorts of creativity. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know that I personally and a lot of my, my friends and colleagues uh, have been recording from home for years and years. And it's just because sometimes there's things you want to do without having to book out a studio. Um, so a lot of the uh, logistics that we faced were, were basically how to interface with, with different singers, with different actors. Um, how to get them what they needed in order to record their their voices and their performances, uh, and then how to kind of tie it all together so it, it sounds and feels like a, a cohesive recording. 
even though it's recorded, it feels like it's another like element of live theater where you like don't know what's gonna happen and you're just gonna make art and see what comes of it. For sure. Yeah, well, and it's also been it's been interesting talking with Matt. Matt and Justin are so so incredibly well musically well versed and and we'd be talking about these feedback and stuff and they'd be like that oh i think the d sharp on that one and i'm like i think it sounded pretty like i like just in how, how we're communicating it's it's become because we're not in the room all like you know it, it's just an interesting even between the three of us like trying to get the notes the right way to be like this is what i'm actually aiming for and it's been it's been interesting but in that regard i think Maddie's bird's eye view of what the story is, what the feeling is, what the character is, has always been really helpful, especially when Matt and I can kind of get very, um, very micro, Maddie can get very macro. <laughs> right, right. Oh, I love it. I love that. That's very exciting. I feel like the group text for y'all must be lit all the time, which is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell us about um, the artists that are involved, because it's, it's an EP. It's not like a cast album, right? Yeah. we. I mean, we had the opportunity to bring bring together, you know, a, a diverse set of new voices that didn't have to necessarily land in a oh, this is cast, you know, in a particular role. It really could just be um, anybody. So well, and it was nice too because that gives you a little freedom to uh, work with people that you either have admired and never had the opportunity to work with, and you know that you might not be able to work with the show on for various. They're on other projects, or they're, in, and then it was great. Like you know, they're. Uh, People like I, we, we worked. Uh, there's, there's so many people on that album that are just so great. But uh, I've been talking about Diana DeGarmo for a really long time. That I, yeah. I'd seen her in Hairspray, and I'd been obsessed with her, and I just <laughs> super talented. And I was so thrilled to get to work with her. And I went to school with Patty Murin, so that was a really exciting one. Um, and I just admired George Salazar. And then there are people that have been attached to the show in some way in the past, yeah. Mich Michelle Ventimiglia and um, and uh, Chris McCarroll and Aurelia Williams, but. You know, it it was a nice way to not feel uh, uh, totally uh, tied to um, to to have to have oh this is going to be Anne tracking through. We could you know pull Emily Baptista mm. for this one, and you know, and Colin Donnell for this one, and it's just it's just a nice way to work. That's yeah. actually been one of the coolest parts for me is to get to hear so many different uh, approaches to these characters, which mm. is something you you know you never get to do when putting on a production. You rarely get to do when making a recording. So. Uh, I, that's just kind of been my favorite part of the process. So if you could describe in one sentence, uh, we're keeping the stakes high, y'all. Um, why should people give the EP a listen? Why should they download it? Uh, <laughs> and then if you I could mean, start. Okay, that idea. Yeah. I'm curious yeah. what that's gonna say. I feel like you guys are have to think about it a little bit. I hope that, it, I think, yeah. it, I, think I, I hope it'll give you, give you a bit of joy. It'll tug at your heartstrings. I hope you'll dance a little bit to it and, um, it's it's a lot of fun. Nailed it. I feel like you had a semicolon in that sentence. It was beautiful. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's also. I, I think it. Uh, I think it feels really contemporary, and I think it's a real contemporary take on a classic. And I think if you know, if you think you know Anne and Anna Green Gables, I think you're gonna find it there. There's it's to be found. Um, but I also think if you don't know it, I think you'll be surprised that it, it's it has a, it's a real. I think we've worked really really hard, and the whole team has worked really hard to give it a fresh new take. And I think and I think we've accomplished that. I just love it. And I think that like Anne, the music. So Anne is she's she's different. She's quirky. There's something off about her and yet there's a there's an enduring appeal like we just we can't get enough of her and i think that that's very much how the music is there's there's some rough edges here and there but it also i think it's very infectious great work all of y'all that was beautiful yes <laughs> and for y'all watching like you can listen to it right now it's on streaming platforms and downloading music platforms so definitely give it a listen highly recommend um and i think now Y'all, it was so much fun talking to you. I had such a blast. Thank you. But Thank I think you. it's time to do the preview. It's going to be the premiere of a different kind of girl's music video performed by someone who perfectly embodies the spirit of Anne Shirley, Juliet Redden. They say your dreams are too bizarre. Don't wish too big. Don't reach too far. You're an orphan and a girl. Remember, that is all you are. They say you do not fit 
meet the mold that you're belligerent and bold. Worst of all, you won't do as you are told.